Australia and Ireland China matches and some of the interesting encounters for today. And we have Mr. Eichmann, Japan's head coach and senior journalist Sandeep Mishra with us. Hello, gentlemen. Uh, what are your analysis for the England Australia matches? Started uh, first two quarters, uh, uh, England dominating in the third quarter, Australia made a comeback in the fourth quarter, both the goals were scored. Uh, well, I think that uh, England was not really dominating. Mm -hmm. uh, Australia wanted to play a too high pace, made many unforced errors because they were eager to win this one. And actually, the both matches were special match matches, mm -hmm. and uh, Australia England is always on target. They want to beat each other badly. And uh, Australia had the benefit of that they they are changing their team now. They have young players, young players, a lot of energy, and they always were energetic. So they make many mistakes in matches, but at the end they keep on going, and that's why in the last quarter they could make their go they could score their goals. Mm -hmm. Also because England had to come, so there was more space. Sandeep, the first two quarters, both the teams were uh, neck and neck uh, and then Australia showed their pedigree and uh, why they are the defending champions and then scored those two goals. No, I think I was clearly disappointed with England's approach probably in this match. Um, they've played some very close games over the last couple of years, three years and we've seen them play some astonishing matches where the pace and the skill and the speed has been almost like, you know, if you can ever put a percentage point to it, it's always been 70-80% of high pace. But um, I think they just couldn't get going. Uh, I was a little disappointed in the sense that the midfield was still making some moves, but hardly any channels were opening up on the, on the left or the right flank and they were not making those penetrative moves that England can push a ball through the striking circle. Australia distinctly unlucky in the first two quarters, though they dominated the game. But uh, at the right time, you know, the reigning world champions, they came up and the fourth quarter was somewhere where they got those goals. But having said that, a point I thought, I don't know if Eichmann would agree to that was, I think a couple of goals there were just let in. I mean, you could see that the Aussies were playing around, the defence was still doing a good job. and. Uh, that reverse hit, probably one of them, should not have gone in. I mean, the goalkeeper was clearly out of position. He was anticipating something to the right. But when you anticipate to the right on a reverse shot, I think the ball normally would go to the other post because that's the angle you're looking for. So, in that way, I think England disappointed. They couldn't get going in the game. And plus, this defensive errors, I thought, gave the game to Australia on a platter in the fourth quarter at least, where England could have made a match. Uh, now, uh, the second match of the day was Ireland-China. Uh, they played a uh, close game and uh, ended up uh, you know, drawing the match. Uh, how do you see that particular match? That was from both sides a good match. Uh, uh, China was defending. They were well structured. They put a lot of pressure on uh, the ball uh, position of uh, Ireland. Ireland had they attacked more, they had also some chances, but they were unable to convert those. And, uh, well, at the end, China was able to hold position. And I think it was, uh, it was deserved, the draw was deserved, although Ireland was the team who was attacking most. Sandeep, how do you see that match and now uh, China will play Australia, the defending champions. I'm excited for that match knowing the fact that you know China has tested uh, England and Ireland and they've kept it, uh, you know, uh, they've drawn both the matches. How do you see that particular match and their match against Ireland? I think um, looking at the pool now, China's got two, Ireland is on one, so they're stuck there a bit. I don't see really China making too much headway against Australia. They may probably try and hold them to a quarter or so, but um, thinking anything more beyond that would probably have Ch Australia play at 20% of the game, which is not possible. Um, the Irish are extremely robust, you know, they, they create moves, they know how to go in, they are physical also in so many ways. They should have closed the game in the first two quarters. They had they had ample chances to have a 2-0 scoreline out there. 
and I think those missed chances is what China took confidence from and with Kim Sang sitting there you know you give him a little bit of an inch and you know he's going to take a feet off you and that's exactly what he did because he, he changed the formation a bit uh, and uh, that 1-1 draw I think in the end justified it it actually justified it if you're not going to take those chances in the first two quarters Ireland's got to blame for themselves and the players were showing it I mean they were they were an angry lot because they knew they could close that game I think they let China off and now it's going to be down to Ireland versus England uh, for the points yeah so they're all stuck there 1-1 one, one England and China's on two Australia's on six so the pool is clear for China, for Australia at least I think they'll end up with nine and um, China is going to stay on two which means that England, Ireland are the ones who probably, you know, if they draw, then again it's 2-2 and on goal averages. But I think if England wins that game, then they're, of course, they're through with three points. Sir, I'd like to ask you about China. They made that, I mean, they're making their debut this World Cup or the first game that they played and the second game that they played. Uh, as a coach, how impressed are you uh, by their uh, play? I'm not really impressed by their play because this is what they can do and uh, this is the inner mongolia team which is a team who is long time together and uh, and in uh, china it's the winner of the national games becomes the national team although inner mongolia didn't win but they were second they lost on shootouts suddenly they are here as uh, the national team so it's a team which is used to play together. They have some weak spots in the team. They have some very good players as well. So the tactical balance and the way to play together, it's well known for them. And as they do, they play a very defending game. They can stay in structure and they can make it difficult for everyone. They are fit. And because of their fitness, they could create a lot of ball pressure and that's where Ireland had problems because they they are not used to be the team who has to make the play. Uh, Ireland are fighters so when they have to fight they do a very good game and when they counter attack then uh, there's space enough and then they can perform. But the moment they are the ones who have to lead it becomes more difficult because every mistake they make is a counter attack chance for uh, China and that makes it very difficult for them too to take uh, lots of risk. So it was an exciting match. I enjoyed it a lot because it was a clash of styles and actually it was the China played like Ireland used to play in before but now they are moving up. That means that they have to change their playing style also. Gentlemen, before we move uh, towards today's matches, two big matches for today, I'd like to ask you, Sandeep, you've covered uh, seven World Cup. This is your eighth World Cup. What is your analysis of uh, the World Cups that has happened? And uh, do you think that, you know, this is one of the best World Cup uh, that has been organized? You see, um, there are a couple of men. I really enjoyed Youth Rec in, in 98, I mean, because the crowds come. At the end of the day, it's the crowds. Even the last World Cup, Hague, you had massive crowds. And I still remember, 6,000, 7,000 odd for the India matches also and a lot of people there were actually saying they, you know, even Bovalander who had a, he just, he, he probably had a stall there for his own company. He sent some 150, 200 out there to watch Sardar to be able to understand how the, how the guy plays, you know. In terms of organization, I think Europe definitely does a great job because, you know, it's for them, it's something that they regularly do. In terms of the World Cups that have happened in India, we've only watched, I've, I didn't see the Bombay one, which was way before. So, uh, yeah, so 2010, uh, I really don't think so, was organized that great. This, in so many ways, is a pleasure to watch. It's, it's, it's a great World Cup for fans because of the way the stadium has been created. The seating, especially, I mean, at the end of the day, leave the media apart, leave the team and the players, the team and the players are the most important ingredient out there. But the fans should enjoy it and I think they are really enjoying this World Cup because of the way the whole stadium has been structured. In so many ways, it's up till this point, I mean, the matches have been going, I would say, to form. But uh, it's been an extremely enjoyable World Cup in terms of watching it, definitely. Sir, you've uh, watched a lot of World Cup. Uh, how different is this one? 
Well, I think this is an amazing World Cup and it's very well organized. The facilities are the best we ever had. Uh, what I also like is that it's a friendly World Cup uh, compared with Delhi. Delhi was unfriendly, cold, no atmosphere, nothing. It was a disaster. And looking at this World Cup, I think this is what we expect from India, but normally we you should expect a little more disorganized World Cup and that isn't it it's very well organized everything is smooth the crowd comes in and it goes quickly they leave the stadium smoothly there's no traffic jam it's, it's well well organized the teams are uh, they are served the best way they can uh, the stadium facilities are excellent the way they uh, support the crowd and also how they created the crowd because uh, I see that there, there are many schools also but they are there and they are all in time and uh, they all also cheer so the full crowd the full stands it's every it's it's a good result of uh, marketing so I think that the marketing wise this is done very well and also if you look around the city all over you see the billboards of hockey and the paintings sure, sure. and everything i have never seen something like this before and i have seen uh, lots of world cups so i think that this is uh, amazing and india should be very proud of this especially ubineswar and uh, the the state because i think that the people makes it as you said yeah. it's the crowd who makes it and uh, this is hockey advertisement. This is a place where everyone wants to be in a, at this moment. So I'm happy that I'm here. Coming back to today's matches where we have uh, Netherlands versus Germany. Uh, the winner of this uh, match will top the pool and qualify for the quarters. Uh, how do you see that match? Uh, Netherlands winning 7-0 against Malaysia and Germany a uh, clinical win 1-0 against Pakistan. They've been, I mean, I can probably the best to comment on Holland. There have been some extremely close matches between the two and um, I still feel looking at both the games though Germany always you know has this whole capability of suddenly pushing itself up. Levels go up by almost 40 percent in some games which are tough. They have a massive history of rivalry Germany and, and Holland but I still point it out towards Holland because of the way they have been playing over the last one year. Max, after taking over the team, has really put in a massive effort to bring some speed, some pace. They always had Stefan Wien and all these players really had some really good pace. But this particular team, with um, there's one question here that probably Eichmann can later on reply. Is this this height in the Dutch team? They're all 6'2", six 6'3", six you know, I, probably one of those guys looks even 6'4". So, is it something which is intentional when you select a team or is this the crop of players in the Dutch team who have always been tall? Because I can only remember Delizen was never tall. I mean, he was the central midfielder of two teams that won the 96 gold medal yeah. in the Olympics and the Youth Rec World Cup. Bram Lomans was tall. Bovlander wasn't really tall, but he was still there. So this team probably now seems almost like, you know, a little unusual in that sense. but. Uh, on the match itself, I think Holland should pick up this game. It will be close, but they will pick it up. So any particular reason why the players are so tall? Uh, is this something that they actually think about it? And, you know, it's a strategy that they uh, have picked such players? No, not at all. But it's, uh, they select skillful players, but they also s select players who have a strong mind. Uh, the competition in Holland is huge and uh, well I think that all the players are fast, they are agile, they are creative, they are able to play on uh, different positions, that's very important that they can do more than one position and uh, they can read the game because they have to make the quick decisions. So saying that I, I don't think that it's particular the tall guys because it doesn't matter actually and uh, but it's about skills 
and tactical uh, physical stuff. But most of all, uh, we want them to be very fast in Holland. But uh, do tall players, I mean, is it a positive thing in terms of skills? And Because I, I can just give one example, Stephen Broscher, Germany, um, he was a little slow because he used to dribble constantly, go in, but he wasn't the guy who used to be very pacey. So, and Shahbaz was extremely fast and he was tall. So, uh, when you look at this bunch, does the height kind of make a distinct advantage? It makes an advantage. It makes a huge advantage because you have a longer reach. Okay. Like Bram Lohmann said, a longer reach and so the passing can be harder, especially with the push, because you have a longer momentum. So, uh, they carry a longer stick as well. So they have and longer stakes and a longer reach. That means that the passing can be faster and harder. They, but on the other hand, the agility, you lose on agility and uh, it compensates. Uh, Sir, so Netherlands uh, forwards are super fast and th the team knows how they want to play. That is uh, going to be there as well today? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, again, I'm saying it's, it's uh, all the cards point to Netherlands in this, this game. I think Germany will have to really lift itself from the last game that they played. They did rotate pretty well in that sense, but I don't think that they have showed that kind of uh, penetration which Netherlands has in this particular team. They have massive penetration. The last time I think I saw them was again in the Hockey World League semi-finals where um, they took the stuffing out of India in that match. It wasn't a large score. But the way they dominated, the way they moved and, and the pace that they generated, I mean it was just 3-4 seconds from the time they had the ball to going into the Indian striking circle and there were something like 16 penetrations I very clearly remember. It was a very superb, in that sense a very superb exhibition of pace, skill and how to score goals from positions where you can't even imagine that a goal can cre be created. I think in that sense Holland has a very solid team right now. Sir, how uh, the Germans will take today's match and how differently will they play today's match? Uh, like the way they played against Pakistan, will it be totally different? Strategies will be totally different? Yes, of course, it's a total different playing style. Uh, Pakistan plays a different type of hockey, they play Asian hockey. Uh, Holland plays Western hockey, it's, they are more used to the tactical play, it will be more tactical. Uh, Germany has their assistant coach is a Dutchman, so Erik Verboom. He is training the team, so uh, I think that the team will be well prepared. But there's a huge difference that uh, Holland had more competition the last year, and uh, Germany only played the European Championship, so they are lacking competition. They had. Uh, eight, nine, 17 days to prepare so they have to grow in this tournament and that will happen so they will be better than the last match but that will not be enough to win now but that's not their aim I think at the end they want to play best four and they will be there the second match of the day will be Malaysia versus Pakistan uh, Oltmans is now the Malaysian coach who knows how the Pakistan team works because he coach the Pakistan team before uh, taking the job with the Malaysian team. Will that help? Yeah, of course. Helps always. I mean, the amount of knowledge you have. But um, I think this is a very different game. I think this probably um, also has a little bit of a personal touch to it in, in so many ways for Pakistan. I do believe that um, there are a lot of people out there disappointed and a little bit angry also in the way he suddenly just jumped off and went to Malaysia. Altman's clearly knew that Pakistan was playing the World Cup and uh, coming down to the match I think it's going to be extremely close it's going to be extremely close I think Pakistan is going to do all they can all they can to take this encounter it's as I said a win is paramount in terms of the World Cup but the win will come with a lot of satisfaction if they can beat Malaysia which is basically Altman's Malaysia so I still feel that Malaysia has the team to take it. They have been performing extremely well for the last two years. Um, you played them in the Asian Games final. Asian yeah, so you know so much about Malaysia that probably none of us can even think right now. But um, 
it's a close encounter. I really can't predict the result in that sense. I think Eichmann's best position to do that. Yes, sir. Can you please elaborate on that, what uh, Sandeep sir is saying? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, firstly, I think that uh, Altman knows Pakistan, but as Mohammed Ervan said, we know all Altmans. Mm. Because the players know him too. Because I, I asked them the same question. I told them that it might be a hard, hard one. They said, no, we know Altmans as well. He knows us, but we know him. And uh, if I look at the progression of uh, Pakistan, they improved more than uh, Malaysia did. Uh, at the Asian Champions Trophy, Pakistan was better than uh, Malaysia. And then the switch was just made. And I think that uh, the players really want to win this one for many reasons. So, and one of those will be because Altman's is there, but also because uh, if they miss this one, it's over. Pakistan hockey is on a point of no return. So if they win, hockey can grow and there's a future. If they lose, it will be very hard to come back and uh, I, it will be a difficult one for them. So because they have to find funding, they have to get the crowd in. So it will be a, a difficult one for Pakistan. And uh, looking at their performance, mm, I think they have a good chance or Malaysia have to change dramatically from the first match because I think that uh, they were no match in the first uh, match against Holland and uh, it will demand a lot of Malaysia so it will be an exciting match because it's this time two Asian teams together so it's a different style again a different way of hockey but at the end, I think uh, if Pakistan can deal with the circumstances, they will win. But uh, coming back to that coaches thing, in, in the global uh, community of all of your coaches, what was the reaction and when Altman's left Pakistan to go to Malaysia, knowing fully well that this team is going to the World Cup? So was it a betrayal? Would you call that? Or do you think this is a professional decision? Let's say that it should be a professional decision from uh, Altman's. So I think that is. But uh, emotionally, emotionally, it will feel like a betrayal from the side of Pakistan, of course. But I don't know the ins and outs. And uh, what really was going on is that Pakistan had no funding. They were in serious trouble. They were saved last minute by the sponsor. And before that, it was even the question if they could come to the World Cup because the players were not paid there was there was a lot of fuss about it so I'm not sure if it was a real betrayal but because players themselves wouldn't play if they were not compensated so there might be an understanding about that so you can say that it's professional on the other hand knowing that both teams will be at the World Cup Let's say it this way, I wouldn't do it. 7-0 uh, uh, in the last match, uh, Malaysia uh, were beaten by the Netherlands. Will Pakistani team look to exploit that uh, psychologically? Of course they would. I mean, Pakistan's always done that. I mean, their hockey has been uh, played on, on personal grounds. They've always played professionally also. They've been one of the really better teams. And as Eichmann says, let, let's put it in a very different way. A Pakistan win is good for world hockey. I'm not saying by any means that Malaysia, you know, is not. But India and Pakistan in so many ways, they are the ones who rev up the game by their, by their skills and everything. And today you're not going to see anything less. I think Pakistan is going to go all out. For them, this is like a final. There's, there's nothing to it. I mean, they've got to finish in the pool. If they finish third, they go to the crossovers and they get a new lease of life. Altman's also has the same thing. He also needs to prove to Malaysia that his joining there has improved things in whatever little short term he has. Though just before the World Cup, I had a chat with him and he says that the time is short. And in the Asian Champions Trophy, I think there were four or five players short of the main players. A couple of them were injured, but they are back here. But 
to have the team not play this game at their level that they are desire or whatever Malaysia has will be a massive setback for Altman's also. Let's take that for granted. It's not going to be easy for him. But I do feel Pakistan can push because they have that mental edge always of 10% in a game. And I think they might push it through. Mm -hmm. Quickly, your prediction for both the matches? Netherlands for sure in the first one. I really don't see Netherlands losing this game. Not at all. It could be close, but I don't see them losing. And here I'll still pip a little bit of to Pakistan. So your predictions? Netherlands will win from Germany. And it will be uh, with two goal difference, two goals difference, and uh, Pakistan will beat uh, Malaysia. I'm sure about that. Uh, now we'll uh, see how the pools are uh, uh, set up right now. Pool A, we, uh, Argentina tops with six points, and where does that leave New Zealand and Spain with uh, both the teams? With New Zealand being on three points and Spain just on one point. Well, I think New Zealand will play. Uh, they will they will become second because they will control the game, and Spain has to come, and that makes them very vulnerable. And what they will do, they they do a lot of running with the ball, and that doesn't work against New Zealand. New Zealand is they have a strong defending unit, and uh, I think that they will counter attack and they might win the match too. You've, you also feel the so same I thing? I think Argentina is virtually through. They, they'll probably just yeah. win the next game, go to nine points, stop, go to quarterfinals directly. And New Zealand should, they're on three now. Uh, so yes, they're yeah. on three so points. I, I guess one can predict a win for them in the next game, but they are now looking forward to it and finish second. I think the main thing is for the third spot out there. In, the, uh, in Pool B, Australia has al already qualified for the quarters. Now, what are the possibilities for England? Because England now plays Ireland on 7th of December. That's going to be a close one, I reckon. I have strong worries for England. Because I don't think I don't see them win from Ireland. I don't see them win from Ireland. Because uh, things have changed in uh, GB. And in the past, the best players from Ireland always went to England to join the GB squad. It's not happening anymore. And uh, the players, they are, they really want to beat England. So they will fight more, and they have that desire more than England has it. And another part is that uh, the England team is, for me, they are too old. So uh, they cannot do better than this. You mentioned that before they were very fast. Yeah. They don't have that speed anymore. Uh, Barry Middleton is a, a very good player. But he's getting old, Older, yeah. and he is their key player. Ashley Jackson is not here, yes, and uh, so they lack the brains of and the creativ creativity of Ashley Jackson. So they need a player like that to create something, and it's not now. It's predictable. So they work hard, they work very hard, but that's not enough. And if Ireland beat them. That's like four points, which means that England will be fourth because yes. China is on two. Yes. So even if they lose to Australia and Ireland beats England, China is also through in number yes. three, and England go to number uh, sorry, Ireland go to number two. But do you yes. actually think that Ireland will be able to beat England? Yes, I think. I mean, think looking at the match yesterday, I think the amount of chances being created, it's it's a case of scoring them. I think Ireland will be pushing that particular point to make a point that okay, we will win this game and go in as number two, which is like a big thing. And Ireland have a, has the best goalie. David, David Hart is yeah. very good. Yeah. True. Uh, coming to Pool C, we have India and Belgium both on four points. That makes it very interesting. Um, your thoughts on that, sir? I think India will become first because uh, I think they will smash Canada. And uh, I think that uh, Belgium will have a, a clear fight with South Africa. And uh, the South African want to get a result. Belgium hasn't showed enough that they are uh, top at the moment. So it will give South Africa hope. And South Africa did well in the last match. So I think they, they want to deliver something here. Do you think that uh, what Sir is saying, Canada will, uh, you know, India, India will thrash, uh, smash uh, 
Canada because the last two encounters that both the teams had uh, one draw and one uh, yeah. For one Canada. for one win for Canada. So, do you think that is a possibility? I, I don't think that we need to take that into account here. I'm not saying the teams are virtually similar, except that probably Sunil is not here, Rupinder is not here, Sardar is not here. But having said that, um, the team is well shaped right now, structurally and even mentally, to be able to take on Canada. And anything less than a four would be disappointing for me especially against this Canadian side. This is not the same side that played in the HWL semi-finals in London. There have been changes and I think India is right now well equipped to look at that topping position of, of a quarter-final. It's got a five plus difference in goal and then you have Belgium but uh, I think Eichmann is right in that point that South Africa will push Belgium. They'll really push them. Belgium in fact will win that game but I don't think the goals will be that high. Uh, Pool did. Uh, we have today's matches: Netherlands, Germany, and Malaysia, Pakistan. Uh, Netherlands will, in all likelihood, top the pool and then move to the quarters. And where that will leave the other teams? I think Pakistan will be second, but therefore they have to deliver today. And uh, well, that's it. Mainly, I think Malaysia will be uh, fourth. Though they have a last match with uh, Germany. Yes, but Germany so Germany will make difficult. it. Yeah. They will make it. And yeah. and then Germany will I think Germany will at the end make the semi finals. <laughs> they will be every match they will be better. And they are winners. So, so you have Holland number one, we have Germany, Germany two and Pakistan number three if they win today. Yeah. And Malaysia losing in the last game. They lose today, they lose the last one to Germany. You don't see them winning there. So then your pool is completed in that respect. All right, gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. That is all for today. We'll come back tomorrow with more match analysis. Thank you so much.